Golang is a very simple, boring language, but it's very, very effective. And I'm going to tell you a couple of tips and tricks that I wished I knew when I started out. Right? And I'm we're going to start with a couple of tips and I'm going to make more videos giving you more and more advanced topics and techniques uh, that you actually need to learn to kickstart your career as a Golang engineer. Right? But before we continue, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and of course jump into my Discord community where we are learning 24-7. Right? And for the people that are really interested, I also have the full-time GoDev course and the HTMX Temple course with Golang. All the links are down in the description. Uh, if you're interested, I'm looking forward to see you as one of my students. Let's continue here. So basically, I'm going to give you, in this video, I'm going to give you three, 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 <laughs> three tips on um, starting Golang if you want to learn it, right? So Golang is a very simple language, so we're not going to discuss anything about the syntax or about variables. That's be, It's very simple. Um, I'm going to crush your dreams right away if you cannot figure that out. You, there, is no, there is no future for you in, 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 in programming at all, right? So um, the first thing that I want to actually give you a uh, tip or a hint or basically an advice is... Do not create too much files, right? I see people, and I, I, I understand that, coming from a JavaScript, coming from PHP, and they are basically starting to create, I don't know, a package foo, and then they're going to basically make a, a package bar, and then, oh, I'm going to subdivide this thing into, I don't know, uh, bus, and, 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 and they, they are going to organize everything. I completely understand that. The problem with Golang is that it's not designed for that, right? The import system is not designed. Why? Because what's going to happen is that you're going to come across circular dependencies. And this is a very, very good advice because I've been there so many times, right? I've been there so many times that I thought, oh, crap, there would be a cool package just for the sake of having it. But then I shot myself in the foot because circular dependency and then you need to make decisions. And most of the time you're going to make bad decisions because then you're going to subdivide it again to get out of this, this, this circular dependency. And it's just a mess. Uh, so don't do that, guys. Of course, Golang is designed to make packages, of course, but it's designed to make these uh, very isolated packages, isolated folders that do a certain thing and they only do that thing and they do it very well right that's basically um, how that works in going and not like in javascript or typescript where you have this like a folder bonanza you know what i mean like a like an orgy or something where everybody's having fun uh, but in golang you're not gonna have fun right that's the first that's just an advice right uh, i understand most of you are not gonna listen to this but you're gonna basically uh, come across that very soon uh, all right the next uh, tip uh, that I'm going to give you if you want to learn Golang is you should focus on learning interfaces very well, right? Um, because interface is something that is very, we know the concept in other languages, but in Golang it's a little bit different. And it's actually, in my opinion, one of the most important building blocks. Because if you are going to be active as a professional Golang developer, or you're going to be just contributing to open source code, you will you will come across interfaces all the time. And if you don't really understand what they are doing or what they are made for, then you have a big problem, right? And there's a lot of things. Don't uh, pe pe people basically in the first they, they understand, right? So newcomers they understand because everybody's saying the same thing. Interface is very important. But the problem is they're going to over-engineer interfaces, which is also not what you want to do, right? If you want to learn more about interfaces, I have, I think, two videos uh, already covering that in depth. So you can check that out. Uh, links are in the description. So why is it important? Uh, I'm going to give you some examples. So we have uh, two important things in Golang, and that's the, well, two. There are a lot, but these are basically the flagships, um, the core building blocks of interfaces. Well, IO operations, I would say, but it's just, I would say it's, it's the hello world of Golang interfaces. And that's basically the uh, the reader, right? And that's the IO reader and also the writer, right? The IO writer, very important. And I would play around with these two for a very long time. If you don't know what to do, if you don't know what project you need to make, just play around with readers and writers and get good and, and understand why they are getting used. For example, uh, a big mistake people make 
well, a mistake. It's actually not a mistake, but it's not going idiomatic. For example, you're going to have this. Um, do stuff with bytes, right? And what's going to happen is they're going to make this function like this. They're going to have a B, which is a slice of byte, right? And people hate the single variable names. So I'm going to say data <laughs> just to cover that up because sometimes I understand that in Golang we do B, D, E, A, and you just need to figure out what it is. Ah, questionable. Uh, so we call it data heat. So that's fine. And it's going to return an error, right? We're going to return nil because why not? And uh, you're going to do some stuff with bytes here. You're going to read them. You're going to whatever. You're going to do whatever with the bytes here, right? And return an error. Okay. Uh, so what you're going to do, you're going to say, uh, for example, the payload is going to be a slice uh, of bytes. And we can say here, uh, hello, sailor or something. And then we're going to say if R is going to be do stuff with bytes, uh, put in the payload here, check if there is an error. And if the error is not nil, you're going to log fade loud this thing, right? Uh, just like that. Boom. Save this thing. Beautiful, right? And if you see this, what's wrong with this function? Well, actually, there's nothing wrong with it, right? Uh, but, but, of course, programming is a very uh, sensitive topic, especially if you join a group of engineers. You have the lead engineer and everybody wants to be, you know, everybody wants to be the nitpicker. Everybody wants to be the best and everybody wants to feel good, boost this ego. And you're going to say, yo, listen, James, this is not good. Why? Well, I will say why. Because what you need to do, actually, this, this, this data, this bytes here, this can be in any size, right? You could say oh, it's going to be a 10 MB uh, thing. It could be, um, it could be a, one, a 1 GB, 1 gigabyte uh, bunch of bytes you are handling. It could be a 500 uh, GB thing, right? We don't know. So in order to make this function more um, ge generic, uh, composable, that's actually the word I'm looking for. If you, to make this function more composable, instead of saying data, we are going to say, yo, no, this is going to be an IO reader, right? Which is an interface. And if we take a look at this reader, you're not going to understand a single thing. I completely agree, but that's why you need to practice this, right? And, and because... It's something that basically cannot be teached, in my opinion. You can actually teach people so much about interfaces, but they're still not going to grasp it because it's something you need to feel. <laughs> it's something that needs to click. It's, it, it, that's what, what, at least what worked for me. It needs to click. And how can something click? Let's do play around with it a lot of times. It's just with relationships. Right? How can it click? You need to play a lot with the girls in order to feel what you need to feel, if you know what I mean. Okay, so... <clears throat> What's going to happen here is uh, it's going to be a reader and we can do a lot. Right now we have the option in this function. We have an option. We have so many options. Right? You could say, okay, maybe we're going to read it all, which makes no sense. Um, because if you do an IO read all here uh, with this R, right? then you're basically going to read all the bytes in memory. right? And it's the same problem it's, if it's 500 GB. Good luck. It's not going to happen, right? Uh, but that's an option, right? It's, you can do that. You could also do, for example, an IO copy, right? An IO copy uh, with a destination and a source. And what IO copy is going to do, that's going to be do more of a chunk uh, copy mechanism, right? If you see IO copy here, it's going to be copy buffer. And here you're going to see what it does, right? It is a buffer here, and it's going to basically create this and um, allocate this amount of, of bytes uh, all the time, instead of reading everything uh, into memory at once, it's going to chunk that, right? And there's a lot of other stuff you can do. You can T-read it, you can, you can, the options are endless. But that's why um, using this reader, right, uh, is just the best practice here, right? I'm not going to cover, cover this into depth, uh, but I'm just telling you that this is very, very important to understand uh, because readers, writers, and they will come a lot in your career path, right? So that's that. Get good with interfaces. Very important. Um, something else? Uh, well, I will, I will give you another example here. For, for example, if you do HTTP uh, post, and that's going to be... Let, let's just inspect that. Let's save this. Inspect this. You see what's going to happen here, right? Post URL content type, and then you see a body, which is an IO reader. And if you do not learn this, then you're going to say, what the hell is a reader? And you're going to get confused, right? 
uh, you're gonna get confused, uh, but not now, right? For example, you're gonna have um, some some JSON payload you wanna post, and that's gonna be a slice of bytes. Of course, it's not JSON, but whatever that it is. And this is gonna be an URL. Let's do some fake URL. This is gonna be some fake content type. And now it wants a reader, and you're gonna say JSON payload. It's not gonna work. But that's the beauty in Golang. You could do something like uh, bytes, uh, new reader, right? And then just do this, uh, this payload in and save it. And now it's gonna work very well. So Golang is all about composing, constructing, reusing, and like a, like a Lego house, right? Uh, just like Achieve always sings about it. That's basically it. Uh, is there something else? Uh, yes, the last but not least, very important stuff, right? We have don't over engineer your folder structure, learn interfaces, and the next thing is learn the package context. Why? Because context is getting used all over the place and context is also something that's most of the time is getting asked in a job interview. They're gonna say context and they're gonna give you an example or they're gonna ask about it, explain it, why is it needed, why, blah, 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 blah. In every single package these days, uh, Reddit clients, uh, database clients, whatever client that is basically going to reach a third, a third party request or something, um, database, whatever, it, it, I, uh, uh, actually an IO blocking operation, it's going to give you, it's going to, uh, being asked to pass a context as a first argument. And in the first time in Golang, you're gonna, it's not gonna make any sense, I understand. And it's gonna be annoying because you're gonna do context background and context to do all the time. But trust me, after a certain time, it's going to make sense to you. But you need to understand why. Right? You need to understand why. Again, you're lucky because I already covered this video, the context package in another video, which I also gonna link down in the description. Right? So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, I'm gonna make more videos about this, giving you some, some tips, but these things, if you start learning Golang, don't focus too much on the syntax. I mean, it's easy, right? Golang is not a big of a deal, um, but you need to focus on interfaces, and you need to focus on the package context. And of course, people are gonna say, there are a lot of more things you need to focus on, but professionally, these are very important because that package context interfaces that basically distinguish a good developer from a very good developer, Golang developer, trust me, right? Um, they are gonna basically instantly blind, blind see if you're, a, if you're a junior or a senior based on interfaces and package context. And package and, and your folder structure. I swear to God, guys. Trust me. Trust me. All right. So if you like these videos, let me know in the comments what you think about these small yep yapping videos about some my my tips, my uh, learning tips for Golang. Because I wished that I knew these, that I, I would basically the first month that I would start learning Golang, I would focus on these things, and then I would be a god very 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 much faster, right? Let me know in the comments what you think about this, and if you have enough comments, if you have enough love, I will make more of these videos like a madman for you guys, right? Thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my next videos or live streams. Cheers.